undoubtedly made their voice heard, and that is going to resonate not only across the country, but definitely across the region. Come on. Just looking at your live shot now, Eamon, from the balcony there at the Al Jazeera office. You see what look like from a distance spot fires. Exactly what are they and where, they are, where are they? Uh, I'm sorry, Kamal, if you can just repeat that question. Sorry, I, I know it's difficult to hear. Also, could you ask your cameraman to zoom in a bit so we can get an idea of those fires and what they are and where they are? Yes, just, uh, just one second, Kamal. He's going to zoom in for you right now. Yeah, Kamal, you know, right, so what's that let me mean? just paint yeah. the picture for you because, let me just paint the picture for you because really what you're seeing are, uh, the, the, a lot of these, uh, the, the bright golden glows that you're seeing are essentially uh, the street lamps in Cairo against the backdrop of the cloud, uh, a black cloud of smoke that is rising from the National Democratic Party. So uh, when we zoomed in, you can still see that that compound is on fire, uh, and that is making it very difficult to see across the entire uh, city. So the only thing that we can see from our vantage point right now that is clearly on fire are the NDP uh, party compound and on the bridge that uh, personnel carry that we saw uh, that was set ablaze uh, about an hour ago. Right. From the vantage point that I'm standing I have seen I have seen projectiles being being lobbed in the direction of the radio and television building uh, that were on fire so I can only conclude that they are some type of uh, you know Molotov cocktail don't want to jump to conclusions but clearly something on fire mm -hmm. is being lobbed in the direction of the forces there I can clearly see that from where I am standing and that is perhaps what has given uh, or what has set ablaze so many of these things that we're seeing across the capital right in front of me is the Hilton Hotel which is an iconic building in of itself, one of the tallest in the heart of Cairo. I can see dozens of tourists in their rooms looking out of their balconies, on looking right down on the street where all of this is happening in front of us, uh, in between the radio and television uh, buildings. Right. So, I mean, the, the absolute cacophony of sound that we're getting, I'm certainly getting in my earpiece here. Can you break it down for me? I mean, on any other day, I would say it almost sounds like fireworks in the background, the cheering people and, and, and explosions. What is it, to the best of your knowledge? Well, what, what I am definitely seeing right now, what I'm definitely seeing right now, uh, and again, unfortunately, the camera is not showing you this, but hold on one second. I'm going to get the camera to, to pan in. Uh, no. I'm going to have the camera pan. Pan, okay. pan, pan, pan. Well, okay, in between us, in between us and this, uh, the Hilton Hotel, as I was saying, there's a very tight street. There is a police car that carries troops, one of those similar to what we've seen on the bridge. Mm -hmm. The protesters have completely overwhelmed it. What you're hearing is the stoning of that right. vehicle. Okay. Every, once, every once in a while, every once in a while, some of the policemen that were in that vehicle opened fire on the protesters, uh, perhaps with ammunition. I have not seen any protesters on the ground, which indicates at least from where I'm standing, no injuries. But they are setting ablaze, setting ablaze that vehicle uh, that was a police carrier. It is right in front of our building. Protesters uh, are, have surrounded it. The police that was in that vehicle seems to have managed to escape, at least from what we are able to see from where we are standing. And they are now completely uh, bashing that. If you give me a second, I will give you a chance to at least uh, just move the camera in position so you can see these pictures. Just one it may, be, it may be a little bit difficult to move it because they're moving that vehicle now that is, they're about to set on fire. Unfortunately, we will not be able to bring you those pictures okay, from no, all, but no. you're getting a sense really just from the sounds of what you're hearing, the kind of chaos uh, that is on the streets. I, as I was saying earlier, our teams went down and walked around the vicinity of our office and in the neighborhood. Uh, there was... There were no, there were no police presence uh, in the area where we were standing. There were no police presence where we were standing. The only gunfire that I am now hearing is in the direction of the radio and television building. It seems for the time being that's where there is some kind of gunfire. Again, I cannot confirm that it's live ammunition, but it is definitely heavy uh, gunfire. We've heard and we've seen uh, tear gases coming from, tear gas canisters coming from that direction, so uh, an indication that that is where the latest uh, wave of clashes is taking place. Ibrahim Arafat is here with me in the studio watching these pictures uh, as, as, as this extraordinary day unfolds. As Eamon was saying there, the police pretty much overwhelmed, it seems. The army is in now. 
what the army does now and then what it does in relation to the government becomes very important, doesn't it? It's early, you know, to tell what the army is going to do. Is the army in the street to reduce the damage? That's it. That's one, one thing. Is the army is there to repress the, the public? That's a different thing. You know, if the army is going to replace politics in general, that's the third thing. So it's a chaotic I'm, I'm sorry, I've got to jump in. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton Unfolding speaking live. events in Egypt. We continue to monitor the situation very closely. We are deeply concerned about the use of violence by Egyptian police and security forces against protesters. And we call on the Egyptian government to do everything in its power to restrain the security forces. At the same time, protesters should also refrain from violence and express themselves peacefully. As we have repeatedly said, we support the universal human rights of the Egyptian people, including the right to freedom of expression, of association, and of assembly. We urge the Egyptian authorities to allow peaceful protests and to reverse the unprecedented steps it has taken to cut off communications. These protests underscore that there are deep grievances within Egyptian society. And the Egyptian government needs to understand that violence will not make these grievances go away. As President Obama said yesterday, reform is absolutely critical to the well-being of Egypt. Egypt has long been an important partner of the United States on a range of regional issues. As a partner, we strongly believe that the Egyptian government needs to engage immediately with the Egyptian people in implementing needed economic, political, and social reforms. We continue to raise with the Egyptian government, as we do with other governments in the region, the imperative for reform and greater openness and participation to provide a better future for all. We want to partner with the Egyptian people and their government to realize their aspirations to live in a democratic society that respects basic human rights. When I was recently in the region, I met with a wide range of civil society groups, and I heard from them about ideas they have that would improve their countries. The people of the Middle East, like people everywhere, are seeking a chance to contribute and to have a role in the decisions that will shape their lives. As I said in Doha, leaders need to respond to these aspirations and to help build that better future for all. They need to view civil society as their partner, not as a threat. Now, there is a great deal of concern also in our government, Mr. Vice President, about the mining disaster that killed 21 miners in Colombia. And we want these right. remarks. in Egypt and urge the government to restrain the security forces while also telling the protesters they should be acting in a peaceful manner. For the government, she said, yes, there are deep grievances in Egyptian society, but that the government needs to understand.